What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 times WWE got the Elimination Chamber wrong. There have been a few times in the past where the winner of the Elimination Chamber should have possibly went to somebody else at the time, but Vince McMahon was like, no, it should probably be this person. And since the Elimination Chamber is right around the corner, man, I definitely wanted to check this out for you guys, man. So we're gonna go down memory lane and see some of these winners that didn't really make sense at the time appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel and let's get right into this video Limmy Chambles, it's time to put a We're bunch of down. wrestlers in a box, shake the box like you're trying to get the seasoning right, and then see which ones fall out and land on WrestleMania. In previous years, WWE have used the Elimination Chamber to do last-minute desperate course corrections before the show of shows. Need to get the WWE Championship off Edge and the World Heavyweight Championship onto him? There's an Elimination Chamber for that. Need mm -hmm. to get the belt off The Undertaker so him and HBK can have a streak versus career match? There's an Elimination Chamber for that. Mm -hmm. Need to absolutely destroy the prestige of the Intercontinental title you better believe there's an elimination chamber for that <laughs> sometimes wwe have got the chamber right this is about the very much not that i'm adam hailing from parts fun known and here are 10 times wwe got the elimination chamber wrong number 10 move sasha in 2018 the first ever women's elimination chamber match was almost very good indeed it wasn't bad made alexa look like a strong champion at least but they also used the match to half tell a story tell it quite badly and then not follow up on that story in any meaningful way picture this sasha and bailey team up to eliminate alexa bliss guaranteeing a new champion then and only then after using her air quotes best friend to help mm -hmm. her get to the final two sasha suddenly activates scar mode and turns here I'll remember Bailey that. in order to win the title setting up instead of Alexa versus sad Nia Jackson a less effective rerun of Ivory versus China Sasha versus Bailey for the raw women's champion you know what I remember when that happened she turned on her before it happened I was like wait that would have been a better match at, at WrestleMania for sure. Ship at WrestleMania. Instead of this, Sasha kicks Bailey into the stampeding gazelles before the final two happens, then manages to bollocks up eliminating Alexa with the betrayal instead, only half paying off in the women's battle royal on the kickoff show, only for yeah. Naomi to punk out Bailey and win instead. This is, it was weird. It just feels like a waste of a pretty good betrayal spot. Number for nine, sure. Swagger wins for Merka. Hey, at least Pat WWE Merka. got all that Glenn <laughs> Beck exposure. It's totally worth it. In 2013, Jack Swagger re-emerged into the upper mid-card with a new manager in the form of Matthew Samity Sam and a new gimmick <laughs> in the form of Fox News. It was certainly very charged. And hey, sometimes Zeb Coulter had some very funny signs. But ultimately, we're still talking about main event Jack Swagger here. And those are four words that when put in that order open up a rift to the bland circle of hell there was only yeah. one elimination chamber match in 2013 and in a field that included chris jericho daniel bryan and randy orton they went with send them back jack who then proceeded to get busted for marijuana possession and lost a fairly mediocre match to alberta del rio at wrestlemania uh. 29 which is a very sh wrestlemania number yeah. eight Shayna baszler ruins everything on paper this rules in practice this absolutely mm -hmm. could have ruled in actuality this was a huge mess and it was so close what they could have done was this have Shayna baszler enter the chamber at number five, have her systematically murder Sarah Logan, Ruby Riot, Natalia, and Liv Morgan, with her eliminating the whole field just in time for her to look at Asuka, stand there, countdown ends, Asuka walks out. Mm. Then give them five minutes as Asuka fights back, but ultimately, Shayna is too much of a monster and puts her down too. What actually happened in... I like that. I actually do like that. Granny, I didn't have a problem. Well... Initially, I didn't have a problem with her kind of running through everybody, but at the same time, I get how that kind of buries everyone in the process. So it would make sense for her to come out like second to last. Everyone's already kind of tired. She rips through them and then have her come out against Asuka, which, you know, Asuka, it comes off as a credible uh, person as well and have ultimately Shayna dispatch Asuka, which I think would have had a greater effect. Granted, it still didn't ha ha matter in the grand scheme of things when it came to her winning the title when, honestly, I think she should have um, uh, against Becky at the time, but still in real life was so close and yet so broken. Shayna entered fourth, killed Natalia, Hogan, and Riot, 
then waited around, then Liv came in and immediately died, then <laughs> more waiting around, yeah. fat swathes of nothing as Shayna ran out of things to do in an empty ring and the fans got bored and were too dead to react to Asuka coming in and then immediately dying as well. A tiny change turned what could have been an exciting series of murders into a slog. So close and yet so far. Number seven, Brawl is unstoppable is stopped. And speaking of big boss Hoss monsters getting theirs in the Elimination Chamber, 2018's main event saw not one, not six, not 12, but seven men step inside the Chambles. Well, six men and one abominable Strowman who eliminated <laughs> the entire field for being beaten by thoroughly not over babyface Roman Reigns. Of course. This was during that two-year window where WWE actually treated Braun like the hyper-entertaining cartoon powerful monster with a penchant for ambulances and mm -hmm. his own hands. But WWE never pulled the trigger on this version of the monster among men, waiting until he'd cooled off significantly, yeah. and also no fans were in attendance for him to win the universal title from Goldberg to literal silence. I mean, considering how much the fans did not want to see Roman Reigns versus Lesnar at Mania 34, why not just go with Strowman here? Pretend like no mercy and crown jewel never happened and feed Lesnar to Braun. It's so here's the thing. I think about that whole situation. I, I think they ruined Braun in the sense of like he was just saying, like, they ruined him. Honestly, they ruined him in the sense of him kind of losing to Brock. Everybody was losing to Brock to build up Roman so Roman can win. But ultimately, they didn't even have him win at this at that particular WrestleMania. So it, 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 it none of it really mattered. <laughs> I don't even know who you would have win that, to be honest with you. <laughs> Something. It's anything other than Roman overcoming the odds once again. Oh, God, that Mania match sucked. I got shivers just remembering it. Number six, swing and a bliss. You know what's great in wrestling? Character development. You know that mm -hmm. post-match bloodline angle at the Royal Rumble this year? That pop is a result of slow, consistent character development, rewarding our investment with setups and payoffs. When WWE was suffering from late stage Vince McMahon, it didn't really do that nope. characters would twist and turn with little to no warning and here's a crackerjack example of that in early 2022 alexa bliss was going through therapy to try to cure her hot topic haunted doll wackadoo bull the segments were very slow burn for a while and then the company thought ah f it, who cares and brought her back at elimination chamber and no one knew what the hell was happening with her character and uh -huh. suddenly she's cured said michael cole before bliss came down and sat on a swing inside a pod laughing to herself like unpossessed people don't i don't think she's cured, no. said Corey Graves. <laughs> Just another example of how WWE really did not invest long-term in characters towards the end of Vince's time. And hey, speaking of, number five, Big E gets forgotten. Sticking with Elimination Chamber 2022 yeah. for a little bit and honestly grumbling about how WWE treated Big E as a main eventer is a bit of a waste of time at this point. After all, he's one of the most positive people in the world, even now. And if he's not mustering the energy to waste on being dropped like a bad habit, then why should we let it fester? Because we're wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. And we're 80% faster. On January 1st, Big E had his title reign prematurely ended by a man who didn't need another title reign and wasn't even in the f***ing match. 24. Yeah, that to to this day, that that was just so mind-boggling, like fucked up, bro. It was earlier. Immediately, Big E was then demoted, never got a rematch for the title, and was shipped off to SmackDown to rejoin New Day. All the singles character work from 2021 instantly unwritten. Then WWE took the belt off Lesnar a few weeks later at the Rumble, yep. and put it back on him a few weeks later at Elimination Chamber, and yep. Big E wasn't involved in any of that. Now, I want you to understand how dumb that booking is. He won the championship in the match he wasn't even supposed to be in, Held the championship for about a month, then lost it. Then goes to another pay-per-view maybe a month later to only gain it back. Why the? Why couldn't you just at least have put him in this chamber match? There were six f***ing people in it. You bollocks. Number four, Goldberg loses to Triple H's injured crotch. I wouldn't want to lose a match to Triple H's penis. I'm not afraid to say it. The first Elimination Chamber match, it's Survivor Series 2002, 
was great. Fun mm -hmm. concept, top stars, lots of feuds blown off all at once, and Triple H dropping the title to a legend having a second run. At that was great. 2003, the second Elimination Chamber match was almost great. Lots of feuds, a legend having a second run, and would have ended the same way. Goldberg was set to win the championship inside that big box, having rocked everyone's dick clean off their bodies. But sadly, one penis was already injured, and that was the problem. Triple H had torn his groin. Yes, I know they're different things, and couldn't really wrestle. Instead of Triple H getting squashed, dropping the title, and then going back for it when he was healthy, Triple H successfully lobbied to postpone Goldberg's coronation until the game was fighting fit. So Trips won the match instead with a single sledgehammer shot out of nowhere, suddenly making the unbeatable monster look totally beatable in the blink of an eye. I, I never liked that decision. That was so dumb. That was dumb. Uh, to this day, is one of those decisions I'd just be like, bro, they should have gave the, the championship to, to Goldberg here. It, it only made sense. It, it It's Goldberg. You could have got it back at a later time. They uh... <sighs> Absolute bollocks from a man with compromised bollocks. Number three, Miz wins LOL. In November 2010, The Miz cashed in Money in the Bank on Randy Orton on Raw and went on to have a bad title reign, feuding with Jerry Lawler, no less. What a fighting champion. WWE stretched out that reign over six months. In February 2021, over 10 years later, Mr. Mizanin's baby boy cashed in Money in the Bank on Drew McIntyre after his Elimination Chamber match and went on to have a title reign that at least this time they condensed into eight days. Mm -hmm. I am not a Miz hater like Luke. Luke hates the Miz and said he would attack him in public if he could. This was a <laughs> royal waste of time and of the Money in the Bank briefcase, which used to belong to Otis. Do you remember that? Yeah. Want to have Bobby Lashley win a WWE Championship match at Mania? That's fine. Do that. Like have Lashley actually dethroned Drew at WrestleMania. That would have been something. Mm -hmm. Something that didn't feel like a randomly cobbled together series of events with no rhyme or reason to them. Yeah. I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm tired. And hey, while we're talking about Lashley, number two, Bobby Lashley is extreme. December to December 2006, the final nail in the coffin of each WWE brand having their own separate pay-per-views until, of course, WWE forgot that was bad and brought it back in 2016 for a few years before they remembered again, oh, that's bad. Looking forward yeah. to branded pay-per-views making a comeback in 2026, I suppose. Anyway, we all know this story. ECW's first proper pay-per-view as WWE ECW was barely promoted. Only two matches announced ahead of time, sandwiched between Survivor Series and Armageddon and ending with Bobby Lashley, another John Cena copy paste but without the promo skills, becoming face of a nostalgia brand that he's never had anything to do with by uh -huh. beating the Big Show, the former champion of a nostalgia brand that he had never anything to do with. The whole extreme elimination chamber was booked insanely. Sabu removed from the match during the pay-per-view itself and replaced with Bob Holly. Lol. Hot up and come <laughs> CM Punk binned off almost immediately. The only actual ECW star left, RVD, also binned off mid match. The crowd turned on it hard. It yeah. was a giant mess with a negative reaction leading to a blow up between Paul Heyman and Vince McMahon, which saw Heyman leave the company for six years. And it's still not even the worst chamber match. And Damn. number one, let the wrong mark in. The worst chamber match ever. <laughs> I mean, it feels mean to say that WWE got this one wrong. They weren't exactly to know that when they built the chamber for the Intercontinental match in 2015, that this chamber was going to be made out of wishes. Wade Barrett pushed Dolph Ziggler into Mark Henry's pod window. The window pops Yo. out like the plastic <laughs> in a pair of 3D glasses and flops to the floor like a redundant fish. At that point, a choice had to be made. Restrain Mark Henry, because it wasn't time for his entrance and them's the rules, or treat the chamber like a hardcore match and there are no rules. Ultimately, yeah. the call backstage was made to go with the second option. Mark enters the match, and oopsie, that's the wrong choice. Don't get me wrong, Mark Henry politely waiting in his pod would have been a bit rubbish, Weird, but maybe yeah. with enough officials running in, smoke and mirrors, bodyguards coming down to stop him from entering, they might have avoided what happened next, which is everything broke. <laughs> the entire order of events. Yeah, the match was thrown out of, like, they obviously had something planned and when that happened they had they're literally calling it on the fly now no one knows what to do because it's like uh he wasn't supposed to be out here what are we gonna fucking do it was thrown off by mark's sudden appearance forcing dolph ziggler to scream instructions at people in the middle of the ring and hope and pray the match could find its rails again agonizingly awful to watch and down to one mistake leading to one bad call an understandable call 
but the wrong one. And that's our list. What yeah. do you think is the biggest mistake WWE has made in and around the Elimination Chamber? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to Parts Unknown for more silly wrestling content. Jam that. Um, this was a good video, man. For me, it's going to have to be Goldberg not winning. I remember watching that and I was like, okay, Goldberg's in WWE. They're treating him like they treated him in WCW. Um, let's let's get this going. Let's get this going. He's literally running through everybody. The spearing of Jericho through the uh, plexi of glass pod was one of the coolest spots I had seen at that time, bro. It's still one of the coolest spots because of JR's commentary. Like, bro, he was just destroying people. The, the crowd was ready for it. You're thinking, okay, this is going to be the end of the Triple H era regime for now and come to find out he didn't want to pull the trigger because he wanted to be healthy he didn't want to get squashed he didn't have to have him get squashed per se granted because he couldn't do as much but i think the right thing is just putting the guy over should have put him over granted he put him over later but it's not the same you put him over then. You put him over at that moment. And then it would have been like a holy shit moment. And then you can try to get it back later on at some point. Um, but that to me is one of the greatest blunders of an elimination chamber. In my personal opinion. It's definitely up there. But comment down below. Let me know what were some of the greatest blunders you guys can think of if it wasn't in this video for elimination chamber but i appreciate all the love and support roll to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate that kid with me see you next one peace